right. So why don't you just start by telling us? Do I have um, anything on my teeth? Nope. No. Do I? Nope. Do I? <laughs> no. Okay, good. Um, Did you really look? Yeah, you look great. Your teeth look great. Angela Tucker is an internationally recognized speaker on adoption issues, a transracial adoptee, and just an all-around badass. We brought her on as a consultant for the series to talk about fostering and adopting transracially, but she had something else she wanted to discuss with us first. I'm thinking about diving into the fact that, you know, I don't love the title, Foster to Adopt. Oh, you're just going to start right there. <laughs> She went on to explain that the term foster to adopt was created by parents who decide to foster a child so that they can eventually adopt them. However, the primary goal of fostering is to reunify the child with their birth family. It is our hope to adopt Jay, but we understand that using the phrase foster to adopt is wishful thinking and not a true commitment to foster care. So we asked her if the F word, a foster and adopt story would be a better title. And she said yes. We have to wait for him to wake up. What do you bet he's down for? 10 minutes, 20 minutes? He's already been down for like 10 minutes. OK. So. Well, there's not much to do till he wakes up. So what do we have to talk about besides the baby? We still have other things in common, right? Mm -hmm. Wait, what? What did we do before? <laughs> yes. Do you have any dance moves? Oh my God. <laughs> Nicole has a really great dance called The Window. All right, let's, let's do a dancing competition. Oh, a dance off? How long were you all fostering before you moved on with uh, an adoption plan? Actually, a full year. We've been calling that phase um, the limbo stage. Mm -hmm. That's really hard because you have this tiny person in your house and you're loving them and supporting them every day. It was kind of hard to kind of like, okay, let's do this. And then, and then know that if it's a baby, it's six months. If it's a child, if it's an older child, it's a year, you know, before you can make 100% guarantees mm -hmm. that nothing's going to happen to tear your family apart. Mm -hmm. Because no one could tell me that I was going to love this individual as much as I, as much as I do. So. Here's your little home binder. Okay. Okay. Okay, this is your certified home agreement. And what this is, is you, this shows you who you are in relationship to him. Mm -hmm. That says you are a foster parent, licensed foster parent. Woo! And so you both need to sign. It might seem a little early for a road trip, but the last time I saw my 93-year-old grandmother, she made me promise to put a great-grandchild in her arms as soon as possible. So where's my baby? Hey, sweetie. Hey, yeah. hey, Cute grandma. kid. So we figured, well, we've got this kid. Maybe they don't need to know the whole complicated situation. Can I have her? Mm. This is what I waited for. Yeah. Trying to hold my finger. Wow, what little fingers. Can you say grandma? No, I don't do What so. should he call you? Because, you know, you're the great grandma. What are they calling mama, your mother? Banana. Banana? <laughs> Nana, Anna, banana. And my mom is Mima. What is she? Mima. Mabel. Just plain Mabel. Mima. Oh, Mima. Mm -hmm. So what do you want her to call him to call me? It's up to you, Grandma. You decide. <laughs> the old broad. 
What is it? <laughs> I'll call you the old broad. The old broad. I don't think this is going to come out. It's just pink. Oh, wait I a minute. I think your finger's on the lens. <laughs> yeah, your now finger's on that little hole. This is it up here? There you go. And I press the screen? Uh-huh, the big white button. The things came up, messages and <laughs> meals and cloud photos, shafting. What's that? Oh, there we go. That was a good shot if I got it. I love you so much. So clearly I won the grandparent lottery. But I have to be honest, sometimes when we're surrounded by our family members, all of whom are white, I think back to a scene from the film I made about transracial adoption, off and running. I don't feel like they understand who I am, how I feel, or anything about the world that I'm in right now. I think I'm growing into my own person and I'm beginning to identify with the African-American side of me. Well, I grew up in a small town up in the northwest corner of the United States, almost near Canada. And the population when I was growing up was primarily white. Growing up with it, it was normal. Didn't mean that it was comfortable. The stares, the comments about how exotic I look, how athletic I look. People often talk about how smiley I am. I smile all the time. And I think it may have been a coping mechanism that it, it softens me. Smiling really helped other people not see me as that angry black woman. You know, all the, the deep implicit biases that we have can be softened. What should white parents adopting children of color spend some time thinking about or doing? Listening to voices of transracially adopted adults thinking about white supremacy and their role that adopting transracially plays within that and being able to clearly state why you want to adopt a child of color. Taking the temperature of your friends and community because it's really an, a matter of safety for your child that it's not safe to be around somebody who dismisses Black Lives Matter, understand racism without feeling a sadness about it because you have to understand that your kid doesn't get the luxury of your privilege. Okay, that's enough. When we started all of this, we were open to fostering a child of any race but we knew that African-American children are placed in foster care at twice the rate of white children. This is an injustice. As foster parents of a child of color, we are committed to dismantling racism in all of the concrete ways that Angela has outlined. What should we buy at the farmer's market? Strawberries. Get avocados, because that's what you're eating these days. All right, Rocky. Rocky, you gotta give me a little space here. There we go. Stand It's 12 to 15 months. You so, officially adopt at that point? Yeah, unless there are appeals. But yeah, there are a lot of really complex and like really contradictory feelings, I think, and on the whole process. Yeah. yeah. The question we get from friends and family these days is when will you know it's going to be permanent? And well, we don't have an answer for them, and we don't have an answer for ourselves. I, I feel like this limbo phase. Our whole life is on hold. You know, it's like, are we two or are we three? 
something that comes with being a foster parent. We are just, we are his caretakers at this point. We are a roof over his head, a right to doctor's appointments, you know. I mean, honestly, I couldn't imagine like us not raising him. I feel like a hypocrite because I'm on board with this larger goal of reunification, but I also am so deeply in love with this child. I feel like he's our child. I can't imagine ever, ever being separated from him. I think I really underestimated how hard this part was going to be.